Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at Kentucky Derby contender Bolt Dioro, one of the leading two-year-olds in the country in 2017, a multiple grade one winner, you could argue compromised by a wide trip. Yes, the outside was the place to be in the Breeders' Cup, <laughs> but he was hung out very, very wide in the juvenile. He made his belated seasonal debut in the San Felipe, a lot of controversy there with the bumping and bouncing off McKinsey, right. and he was eventually placed first via disqualification. And then in his most recent start, he was up against the Derby favorite, Justify. And the way the race flow went, Mike, Baltiero was kind of up against it, wasn't he? Yeah, it's not an easy trip um, for a horse like him You'll to get chase. when you're chasing a horse who's really good in front of you and sort of setting his own pace. Um, you can see Bolter. They The one thing about this race is Javier Castellano, who was riding that day, really tried to get this horse to attack Justify through the second turn. Couldn't get there. Really tried to get him to attack him again in the stretch. Couldn't get there. Settled for second best. Um, the flip side of that whole trip thing is he's one of very few horses that I can think of heading into this Kentucky Derby. One of the few really good horses who isn't exiting a major prep race where he just had everything go his own way. You talk about the three, basically the three favorites, three of the top contenders, Magnum Justify, Moon Magna Moon on a slow pace, Mendelssohn on a gold rail, Justify in the race we just saw sort of making his own pace. You could even throw Audible in there, catching the wicked fast pace in front of him in the Florida Derby. All these horses, top contenders, yes, had everything go perfectly in their major prep race. This horse really did not. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question that you're gonna hate because you're gonna say you can't quantify it. Bolt Dioro has had two races this year and they've both been fairly gut-busting. Mm. The McKinsey race was a very hard race off of the layoff and I think a lot of folks were gonna say, good, that's what he needed. He missed a little bit of yeah. time. That was a good start back. He had to run real hard in the Santa Anita True. Derby, and now that's two tough races in a row. Now, it's either going to go one of two ways. It's going to completely toughen him up and have him ready to go right. in a, against 19 others in the Kentucky Derby, or are you worried about the regression off two hard races? Yeah, that's a, actually a, a very valid point because he really has laid it all out there in his first two starts uh, as a three-year-old, and he doesn't really have that much to show for it. I guess he's got a a San Felipe win via disqualification to show for it. But I don't know, man. Um, he really has taken sort of the worst of it in each of his first two starts. And that might not be a great thing. Some handicappers I've talked to watch the Santanita Derby. They simply walked away from the screen. They said the best horse won. That's yeah. it. Do you agree with that situation? Or do you think if situations are different, Boltiaro could easily turn yeah. the tables? Yeah, well, I might agree with, bo with uh, both of those things. I really That's feel right. like Justified just might be a better horse than him. On the other hand, you know, things are, are going to be different at, at Churchill Downs. The race is going to set up differently. Justify is not going to control that pace, as far as I can tell. I mean, who knows what will happen, but it, it's hard for me to believe that Justify just gets loose on the lead in that race. It's going to be a different race. It's going to give Boltoro a better chance. Perhaps one of the most underrated assets of Boltoro is his tactical speed. He was far back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile due to some circumstances, yeah. the outside post, the fast pace in sure. front of him. I'm not sure he has to be that far behind, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him more more in mid-pack than in the true chase mode of the Santa Anita Derby, yeah. or in the San Felipe, where he was sort of forced to go with that horse McKinsey. True enough. I mean, I think that's a that's another good point, too, because he can be forward if he has to be, but I think this horse is, is fine from racing off the pace, and that's probably where he's going to be um, in Kentucky. Despite being a millionaire, despite being a multiple grade one stakes winner coming off two triple-digit buyer speed figures, do you believe that of the top contenders in this race right now, Bolt Dioro is the value of the field. Um, yeah, he might be the value of the field. I, that's hard for me to say. Um, he might be. I don't know how they're going to bet the race. I feel like he's got enough fans um, and enough people who sort of look at his last two prep races sort of the way we're laying it out and feel like this horse has a real chance in Kentucky. Um, and I sort of am in that camp as well. I think he's a major contender in that race. My problem with Bolt Dioro is... I've just never really liked him that much. Really? Yeah. Well, why? I just, you know, his races as a two-year-old just didn't do a lot for me. Um, he has the one really fast race, the front runner, which I I felt like was a little bit phony when I watched it, but we'll see what happens. He's obviously shown that maybe I'm wrong about that off of his first two starts this year because he's run fast in both of them. Um, but I've just never been a big fan of the source. But he is one of the most uh, talented three-year-olds we have. Certainly one of the fastest from a buyer's speed figure standpoint. And one of the more accomplished with multiple yeah. grade A lot of ways to like this one. On his record. A lot of ways to like Bolt Dioro on the first Saturday in May.